Today's story is about a 28-year-old female. She is basically the top dog in her family, and what I mean by that is she is the number one breadwinner. She's a sales executive, but not just any sales executive. She is the best at her workplace, but there's one problem to the story, her sister, Chelsea. You see, Chelsea doesn't work. She's single, she's a mother, and she's basically surviving off of OP's kindness. Well, it gets completely carried away, and I'm not joking, guys. I mean carried away. Because she's now starting to demand. Not ask, not say thank you for the monthly money that OP's giving her. By the way, out of the kindness of her heart, she's demanding to have it. Well, here's where the story gets really twisted. OP gets a raise at workplace, and she has this dream car that she's always wanted. Well, come to find out, OP's sister finds out about this dream car purchase, and she loses her mind, saying, How could you not think of my little son? You could have got him college, saved up for his college expenses, but no, you spent it on a stupid car. Well, guys... Just when you think OP's parents would jump in, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen because they have to say this. And stick around to the end because there is one wild update. So, this is a throwaway account because I don't want anyone close to me to know about it. But I'm fuming with anger and also very heartbroken. I could use some genuine good advice. I apologize in advance if this turns out to be really long. This situation just proves that any family can take advantage of your kindness and generosity. Let me give some context. I'm 28 and female and have been working as a sales executive for the past few years. I got this job immediately after graduation and I've been doing extremely well. I'm even one of those top sales executives at the company, but enough about my job. I have a younger sister, Chelsea, who's 24, so four years younger, who has a son called Aiden, who's five. She's gotten pregnant in her senior year, and unfortunately, my nephew's father has not been in the picture since. The moment my sister told him that she was pregnant, he told her that he wanted nothing to do with the baby. Anyways, it has not been an easy journey for her at all. Especially because she has been unemployed for more than a year. Since I got a promotion, I have been helping her out financially, which I don't mind doing because it is not her fault that she's lost her job, and unfortunately our parent can't help her out as much. Also, I want my nephew to have a stable and secure life, because he is still young and a child needs stability, so helping them out really is not a big burden. Anyways... Let's carry on to what is going on now. I'm at work and busy looking over documents in my office when there's a knock at the door. I look up and see that it's my boss. I flash him a big smile and he walks in and we greet each other. And he takes a seat opposite of me and I start to feel nervous because my boss hardly comes to my office. And there have been office rumors that people are getting fired. And I hope I'm not one of them. I slightly shake my head to get these negative thoughts out of my mind. He proceeds to tell me that he's super proud of me and that the company appreciates all my hard work. I smile and tell him that I'm just doing my job. He continues to tell me that he wants to offer me a salary increase. and I try my hardest not to scream out excitement. I thank him, and he tells me that I should pass by his office to sign the documents that will notify human resources about my salary increase. As soon as he leaves, I immediately call my best friend Justine. She congratulates me. I then call my parents to tell them about the news, and they tell me that they're proud of me. To celebrate my salary increase, my parents suggested that we have a celebration dinner, so, we're out at this fancy restaurant that my father had recommended, and joining us are my sister and nephew, whom I have not seen in a while. Dinner is amazing and relaxing, and I'm very family-oriented and love spending time with my family. While I'm telling my parents about work, my sister cuts me off by asking when I'll be sending her money for her rent. 
I slightly raise my eyebrow because I always give my sister money for her rent and necessities at the end of the month, and it's currently the middle of the month. So I tell her that I will give the money at the end of the month like I always do, and she then asks me why I can't give the money since I got a salary increase, because it means that I now have extra money. I look at her in confusion because she's never asked me to give her money before the end of the month. My mother rolls her eyes and tells Chelsea to stop bringing up her financial issues during the celebration dinner. My father then proceeds to ask Chelsea when she's going to get a job and stop relying on me. Chelsea keeps quiet and takes a sip of her wine and my mother continues to lecture Chelsea about being responsible and taking care of her child. I start to feel uncomfortable because I know how uncomfortable and useless this topic makes Chelsea feel, but I did find it weird that she has not congratulated me on my salary increase, yet she made a comment about why I can't give her the money now. Maybe she's stressed about how finances are because everything has increased, especially food and I know that Aiden takes a lunchbox to school because the hot food program they have at his school is very expensive. So, we finish up with dinner, and as we head out, I pull Chelsea to the side and ask her if I can come over this weekend. She gives me a small smile and tells me that she would love that, especially because Aiden has been missing me. On cue, Aiden runs to me and gives me a big hug. He tells me that he was so happy to see me and that dinner was fun. My nephew is my soft spot and he's such a sweetheart. There isn't anything I would not do for him. It's Saturday morning and I had invited my sister and nephew to meet me at a car dealership. You see, there's this beautiful luxury car that I've been eyeing for a few years. And now I can finally afford it. It's literally my dream car and... Chelsea and Aiden finally arrive. We go to check out the cars and Chelsea seems a bit confused about why we're at a dealership. I then tell her that I want to buy and spoil myself with the luxury car. Well, she slightly frowns and rolls her eyes but notices that I'm looking at her. She shakes her head a bit and tells me that she's happy for me. However, while we're looking at the cars, she does not seem interested. And whenever I ask her opinions, she would just frown and say she doesn't know anything about cars. I eventually find the car and ask the dealership if they can reserve it for me because I did not bring it in all the required documents. They tell me that they can put it on reserve for two days because this car is in very high demand. So we leave the dealership and head off to the park so that Aiden can play. While we're watching Aiden play on the jungle gym... Chelsea proceeds to tell me that she thinks buying such an expensive car is a waste of money and that I should rather spend my hard-earned money on something more valuable. I raise my eyebrows at her and ask her what I should spend my money on then. She responds by saying that Aiden is growing up so fast and college is oh so expensive and it's clear that Aiden's father will never reach out to even offer to help out. She thinks I should use the money that I've been saving to start Aiden's college fund. Well, my mind immediately just starts racing because I love and adore my nephew. And my sister's right, college is expensive and it's not guaranteed that a person will get a scholarship. I mean, I was lucky enough to get one, but Chelsea wasn't. So She was unable to go to college, but she also had Aiden. I know Chelsea won't be able to afford Aiden's college fund on her own. Right now, I'm so confused. Should I buy that car? Guys, please give me some advice. I'll be back for an update. What is up, everybody? Mr. Reddito here, so let's play a game. Pause the video and drop a comment down below. Here's the question. Do you think OP is going to buy the car of her dreams? Or is she going to help little Aiden with the college fund expenses? After you post your comment, come back to your comment once the video's over and let's see who was right. If you guys are new to the channel, we are about to hit 100,000 subscribers and guys, I could not do it without each and every one of you. So go ahead, 
support the channel by pressing that subscribe button directly underneath this video, and let's see if OP's buying Aiden. That college fund or that fancy new car. Update number one. I hope you guys are ready for the roller coaster of emotions because wow. What I found out really shocked me and made me realize that family can indeed take advantage of you. It's been a week since my sister made that heavy suggestion, and I obviously want my nephew to have a bright and successful future, and I would not mind investing in his college fund, but not right now. I've been wanting this car for literally years, and it's been a while since I last spoiled myself. My sister has been blowing up my phone for the whole week, asking if I'll invest in Aiden's college funds, and I've been ignoring her because I don't have an answer for her right now. I'm out with my friend Justine, and I'm updating her about the whole college fund recommendation, and she tells me that she is not shocked about Chelsea making that suggestion, because Chelsea has been taking advantage of me. I sigh deeply when she says this. Justine feels that Chelsea is taking advantage of me because I simply pay for everything. And that's the reason why she still has not found a job to date. My phone starts ringing and I see that it is my sister. Sending me multiple messages demanding the money that I quote owe her. I just stare at my phone in shock because this is not money I owe her. This is money I give to her out of generosity and kindness of my heart. I show Justine the messages and she just shakes her head. I then tell her that Chelsea has been very demanding and entitled lately concerning money. Justine tells me that it's weird that Chelsea's demanding money because yesterday she saw her at the expensive boutique buying these expensive designer red bottom high heels. Okay. Where would my employed sister get the money to buy such expensive shoes? The money I give her is only for rent and necessities to ensure that my nephew has a roof over his head and food on the table. Justine can tell that I'm confused about this, and she tells me that I should look into it because she does not trust Chelsea. I slowly nod my head and try my best to forget about what Justine told me. Maybe one of Chelsea's friends had asked her to buy them the shoes because they were busy or something, but there's no way that Chelsea could afford such an expensive shoe if she's busy blowing up my phone about money. A little while later, I received a call from the landlord who owns the apartment that my sister is renting. He informs me that there have been no payments for the past three months, and when he went to ask my sister about it, she told him that he should call me so that I can pay the outstanding balance. I asked him if, well, he can email me the statement because I'm so confused. I've been giving Chelsea money for rent every single month. And now I'm finding out that rent hasn't been paid for three months? I received the email from the landlord and it clearly shows that Chelsea has not paid rent for the past three months, which makes me wonder what she did with the rent money. The landlord also wrote in the email that if there is not any sort of payment made, he will have no choice but to evict them. Well, I started feeling anxious and stressed. I immediately head over to Chelsea's apartment to find out what's going on because none of this is making any sense. I knock on the door of the apartment and no one answers, and I decide to use the spare key, and when I enter the apartment, I'm absolutely shocked and gobsmacked. I find Aiden alone, unsupervised, watching cartoon on the television, but Chelsea is nowhere to be found. I ask little Aiden where his mother is, and he tells me that Chelsea went out. I then ask him if his mother has always just been leaving him alone at home, and he nods his head in affirmative. He also tells him that his mom just leaves for a little while and always comes back with his favorite candy. I smile at little Layden and tell him that I'm going to make him a favorite little sandwich that he likes. And my blood is absolutely fuming with anger. How could she leave Aiden all by himself when he's a seven-year-old? What was so important that she had to buy it and could not wait? Or why didn't she call me, my mother, or even a babysitter to look after Aiden? 
After an hour, Chelsea comes into the apartment with shopping bags from a designer store. As soon as she sees me, she drops the bags, and I can see the guilt that's written all over her face. I also notice that she has done her hair. I mean, guys, don't get me wrong. There's absolutely nothing wrong with spoiling yourself, but at least make sure your responsibilities are taken care of. I ask Aiden to please go to his room, because I need to talk to his mom. As soon as he's out of earshot, I ask Chelsea what the hell she's doing and why she has not been paying her rent. She rolls her eyes at me and tries to walk past me, but I pull her arm and tell her that she's not avoiding this conversation. She drops her shopping bag and folds her arm with an attitude, and I ask her what she has been doing with the money I have been sending her because I received a call from the landlord who informed me that the rent has not been paid for the past 90 days. She just tells me that the money I was sending her for rent was simply not enough, so instead of paying the rent, she would rather use that money for something else. I cannot believe the words coming out of this girl's mouth. Well, this is exactly what my mother and Justine tried to warn me about, how irresponsible Chelsea is. I go to her shopping bags and take the things out of them, and guys, $500 spent on clothing. I can't believe she's been using my hard-earned money that's meant to be used to help take care of my nephew for her own expensive expenses. She can see that I'm fuming with anger and she's acting nonchalant, and I tell her that she has to return all of these things and use the money to pay for the rent. She rolls her eyes and tells me that I'm overreacting and I need to chillax. She continues to say that she deserves nice things too and to also spoil herself. She then says I can't always be the one to get spoiled myself. I respond by telling her that I work hard every single day. And that is why I'm able to quote spoil myself. I continue saying that unlike her... I work hard for everything I buy myself. She smirks and tells me that I think I am so much better than her just because I went to college and got this fancy job. I tell her that my fancy job is the reason why I'm able to help her and my nephew out financially. I remind her that I don't have to help her out, but I do it because I want my nephews to have a secure, stable life and I want the best for him. She then tells me that I should stop using her child as a charity and act like I care about him when I really don't. I gasp in shock because she knows how much I love little Aiden. She then proceeds to tell me that if I really do care about my nephew, then I should use my savings to start his college trust fund instead of that fancy luxury car I desire. I just glare at her and shake my head. I don't understand how somebody can be so selfish and manipulative. As I'm about to leave with an entitled attitude, my sister says to me, and I quote, I better pay that outstanding rent unless I want to see her and my so-called favorite nephew out on the streets. Wow. I never knew how my sister had this selfish entitled side to her. I'll update soon. Updates. Number two. A week has passed since I found out that my sister has been taking advantage of my kindness and generosity. I have just been keeping to myself and trying to figure things out. I'm busy reading through emails at work when I received a text message from my mother. The text is saying, Well, that my sister apparently told my parents that I'm refusing to pay her rent for this month and that the landlord is threatening to evict her and my nephew. I can't believe she would just go and lie about this to my parents. I mean, honestly, I'm tired of being taken advantage of and not putting myself first. Clearly, Chelsea does not mind putting herself first, so why should I put her first? I'm sure I can find a way to take care of my nephew without having to include her. During my lunch break, I head to the car dealership where I buy my dream luxury car. That's right. I did it. I feel so happy and proud of myself because this is my first big girl luxury purchase and all my hard work is finally paying off. While I wait for them to give me my car, 
I text my parents and sister to invite them over to my place for a celebration lunch, but I don't tell them what we're celebrating. I have something planned up my sleeve, and we can call this my little revenge. Well, Saturday finally rolls around, and I'm busy just making sure everything is ready for my celebration lunch. I made sure that my new car was parked outside the garage and not inside so that it would be the first thing that my sister would see. As soon as I'm done with the lunch preparations, there's a knock on my door. I answered the door and let everyone come inside and I see the shock and anger on my sister's face, probably because of the new car. I flash them a giant smile and tell them that we will be eating outside on the patio so that Aiden can play outside while we chit-chat. We take our seats, and Aiden immediately goes to play with the toys I laid out for him. Chelsea immediately snaps at me, and she tells me that she can't believe I chose the car over her son's education. I shrug my shoulders and offer them some lemonade. She faces my parents and proceeds to say, Do they see how selfish I am? My mother asks me what's going on and why I have not paid the rent. I cough a little bit and take a sip of my lemonade, and I take out my phone and go to my emails. I give my parents the phone, and they ask me what I'm showing them. I see Chelsea freezing up a little bit, and I begin to explain to my parents that I've been giving Chelsea money for rent, but I received a call a while back from the landlord, telling me that the rent has not been paid for the past three months, meaning that Chelsea was not using the money I was sending her to pay the rent. The emails. I was showing them were my bank statement showing how much I send Chelsea per month, and other emails showed them the email from the landlord. Well, I then continue telling them that when I went to confront Chelsea about this, I did not find her at the apartment. And Aiden was left home alone with no adult supervision? I see my mother starting to fume with anger, and I mention that Chelsea had shopping bags full of designer clothing for herself and nothing for Aiden. Well, my father, out of anger and frustration, hits the table with his hand, and he turns to face Chelsea and asks her when she's going to grow up and stop acting like such a brat. Chelsea gives me an angry death stare, and I just smirk. I know she never expected me to expose her irresponsibility and selfishness to my parents because I've always felt, I don't know, like I need to protect her from them. That's why it was so easy for her to make such unnecessary demands and go, quote, snitch on my parents because she thought I would just keep quiet and take the fall as I've always done. But oh no, not this time, Chelsea. My father tells Chelsea to stop looking at me and to answer him because he's sick and tired of her nonsense and immature behavior. My mother cuts my father off and proceeds to ask her why the hell she would leave Aiden all alone with absolutely no adult supervision and Chelsea starts stuttering and tries to lie. Even though I already told our parents the absolute truth, my father shakes his head in disappointment. I then tell them that Chelsea was pressuring me to use my savings to start Aiden's college fund instead of buying myself the car that I've always wanted. My mother tells me that she's glad that I bought myself a car because Aiden is Chelsea's responsibility and I should only be helping out where I can. She then asks Chelsea when she's going to get a job because it's been a whole year. Chelsea admits that she has not been looking for unemployment because... She is going through a hard time. I glared at her because she had told me that she had been looking for a job. Wow, I'm shocked because I have even offered to take her to CV to my workplace. For this personal assistant position that's been open for a while, and she told me that I did not have to because there's a job that looked promising. But clearly, that was another lie. I just shake my head and tell her that I'm disappointed in her. And honestly, I'm heartbroken and feel so betrayed by her actions. I never expected my own sister to take advantage of me. I know this was my way of getting my little revenge against my sister, but it really doesn't feel as good or sweet as I thought it would. Am I glad that I got a chance to expose her selfish, manipulative way? Yes, 
Yes, I am. But at the same time, it still hurts to know that she did all this intentionally. It shows that she did not mind taking my kindness for granted, and she knew that she could use Aiden as a way to manipulate me even more. I'm just glad that everything came to light, and I'm so glad that I bought myself the luxury car I've always wanted. Update number three. You never expect your own family or even your own sister, well, are the ones that will take advantage of you by using you for manipulation. It's been a few months since I've hosted the celebration lunch at my house, and that was the last time I actually saw my sister. A lot's changed since that day, and since you guys have been asking me for an update, here it is, and it's the final one. My sister and Aiden have to move back into my parents' home because my parents did not trust her to be with Aiden on her own after finding out that she left Aiden to his own supervision on more than one occasion. It turns out it was something she regularly did when she wanted to go on her little spending sprees. At first she refused until I told her that I would no longer be spending her money, that I would definitely not be paying her rent. So, basically what happened was that I managed to sort out the outstanding rent, but I told the landlord not to renew the lease, which he agreed to because he found Chelsea difficult to deal with anyways. The amount of insult she sent to me once she found out that she had until the end of the month to pack up her stuff and leave were absolutely disgusting, and made me dislike her even more. Anyways, my parents told me that if she did not move back home, they would take her to court and demand custody of Aiden. Once they threatened her with that, she immediately changed her tune and moved back home because she knew that my parents were serious about taking her to court. Also, she finally, finally got a job. My parents told her that they would only be paying for Aiden's expenses, and I also told her that I would only be sending money for Aiden through our mother, and not through her anymore. Once I heard that she got a job at a retail store, I realized that she was not, well, really looking for a job because I was clearly funding her lifestyle 100%. Justine had warned me about this, and I remember her telling me that Chelsea had became lazy because I'm just doing everything for her, so why would she feel the need to look for work? It's really disappointing. I was genuinely trying to help her out financially because I can only imagine how hard and straining it is to be a single mother. Having to take care of a child on your own with no help from the other parents must be extremely taxing. I mean, that was the biggest reason why I wanted to help her out financially. I thought she would be grateful, but I do think at first she was grateful, but then she started becoming greedy and entitled. With regards to me and my sister's relationship, it is non-existent. After that day, I decided to distance myself from her, thinking that the distance would help out her relationship, but it actually made it worse because once I took away my financial support, she became very toxic and just straight up mean. I realized the type of person that she truly is. She is not a nice person and I'm glad that she showed her true colors. As much as it hurts me that I don't have a relationship with my only sibling, I have so much peace in mind now. I still have a relationship with my nephew and I see him whenever I can. I normally see him when my sister's at work or my mother brings him to me for a visit. I did start a college fund for him, which I'll be contributing to whenever I can. At least Chelsea is finally working now, so she can do contribute to it too. I thought getting my revenge against my sister would make me feel better, and it did for a moment. Maybe. Revenge is not always supposed to feel good, but at least my revenge made my sister finally grow up and take some responsibility in her life. Well, I think the only good thing that came out of this story is Chelsea finally got a job. I mean, what really boiled my blood, and a lot of the commenters were also talking about this, the fact that Chelsea would leave a seven-year-old at home and who knows how long she's been leaving him alone for could have been for years while she goes out and spends money that was designed to be for little Aiden and the rent and she wasn't even buying food or anything like that. No, 
she was buying the most frivolous, non-useful items like designer heels. I mean, who has a kid, doesn't have a job, and spends $500 on designer shoes? Luckily, at the end of it, everyone cut her off, and she was forced to have to get a job. So there is a good outcome to this story, somewhat. However, OP's relationship with Chelsea is basically tarnished forever. At least, though, OP was able to get that car that she always wanted. Guys, I want to hear from you, and my number one question I want to ask you guys, do you think the parents should have intervened way sooner, or do you think OP was just basically a floor mat? allowing her sister to run over her for all those years, bottling up all this anger until one day it finally just exploded. When she was telling her parents everything Chelsea was up to, saying how she left the kid alone, she's not responsible, she's 90 days behind on her rent. I mean, what was Chelsea thinking? She knew the landlord was eventually going to kick him out. It didn't stop her from buying designer clothing and just spending the money on whatever she was spending it on. So let's talk about it in the comment section. Guys, thank you for joining me on today's video. I do hope you enjoyed it. This one was crazy. Drop your comments down below. My name's Mr. Redito if you're new to the channel. We do daily stories every single day. I hope to see you tomorrow. Hit that subscribe button, but remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.